In Vogue I just added some amazing new features. Hello my friends, how are you doing? I'm wearing my cat shirt and that means things just got really serious. And you might have heard that In Vogue is going commercial. Why does everything in the world have to be about money? But it is not as bad as you think because I talked to the team and what they actually mean by that is they, they want to keep the project free and open source for you and me so we can use it and have fun with it. But they want to commercialize it to bigger companies with large teams. For example, companies that make video games, movies, ad agencies, things like that. So this is where they try to get the money from because they want to make Invoke AI really good, safe for the future. And of course, all of that takes a lot of money. So they take the money from the corporations and then give us free stuff as open source. Amazing concept, kind of like a little bit Robin Hood. But now let's talk about the changes in Invoke and how to install the new version. So there's two ways to update this. First of all, you can go into the Invoke AI folder and there you'll find an update.bat. Now you want to double click on that and run through that process. But for me, that was very slow, I guess, because a lot of people are downloading the update right now. So I'll Alternatively, what you can do is I have here a link for you for the update installer zip. Download that, extract the zip file, and then you will find this Invoke AI installer folder. You want to open that up. In here, you have these files. Take all of them and drag them into your Invoke AI folder. They will overwrite the file, so agree to overwriting things, but nothing is lost. Don't worry. This is just renewing the installer so you can get the newest version. After this is done, simply double click on the installer.bat and run through the full process. Now this is going to download some new updated CKPT files. So it's going to download a lot of stuff for you, several gigabytes. But after that, you have the newest version that also comes, and this is really amazing, with Xformer, which is not just downloaded and it installs for you, but also then running in the system. So this is better for slower computers and it's also faster for the rendering. After all of that is done, you want to click on the Invoke bat to start Invoke AI. Now, when you do this, you will realize there are new options in here, like the command line run textual inversion training. That's a thing now. Merge models. That's a thing now. And other options you have here. A lot of that can be very useful. But of course, first we want to load the browser based UI. So just press two and then enter to load that. After this has started, it's showing you here a point for your browser with a local web address. So you want to copy this over into your browser as usual. And then simply, of course, load that to go into Invoke AI. Now here, a lot of the things look the same, but there are some very interesting changes. And one of the biggest changes is when you go here to the model manager and you click here on add new, you will see that now you have the choice between add checkpoint safe tensor models, which means that now Invoke AI supports safe tensor model. Absolutely amazing, but even better, they also support diffuser models. This is going to be the future of these models. It is developed together with Hugging Face. And the benefit of diffuser models is that they load faster and they are more effective in your system. Now, the really amazing thing here is that all of the models you have already loaded that the work with Invoke AI can be converted to diffusers with Invoke AI. Now, let me show you how to do that. First of all, you want to click here on the model manager again, and it is good to have these models already installed into your Invoke AI. And the way you import them is the classic way you click on add new, you click here on add checkpoint and save tensor. Then you point to the folder where these models are stored. For me, this is in the models folder inside of automatic 1111. So you can scan again here and then you just add all of these models in here. The benefit for that is it makes it a little bit easier for you to convert these models into diffuser models. Now, after this is done, the main thing you need is the name of the model. It doesn't have to have the file ending, just the name of that is fine. For example, here we have Chroma V5. And the process of converting them is very quick and easy. Close down the command window again. And then start again, invoke AI with the invoke AI bet. And you want to choose one here for command line. Don't worry, this is not complex. So type one, hit enter. Wait until this is loaded the command line version. Then type here exclamation mark optimize and then the name of your model. So in this case, 
Chroma V5 and then hit enter. It asks you if you want to replace the model's VAE with your VAE. This is only relevant for models who come with their own VAE file. In most cases, these models don't have their own VAE files. So here we can type Y and then hit enter. Now, after this is done, it only takes some seconds. It asks you if you should load the model. You don't want to load it because you're not going to use the command line to create images. So you can type N, enter. Delete the original CKPT file. You don't want to have that. So type N, enter. And then this is done. After this is finished and you've closed the command line window, you again want to click on invoke bat and then start the UI by typing two and enter. Now, the great thing here is when we go here to our model manager again, you can click here on the tabs for all models, checkpoints and diffusers. Click on diffusers and you will see that the Chroma V5 version is already in here. It has replaced inside of Invoke AI the original model and put it in its own folder. But the original model that you have in your automatic 1111 folder is not deleted, is not touched at all because of the choices we just made. So you can simply load this by clicking here on load. And you can see that this is quickly rendering some very stunning images. So now we have CKPT, we have Safe Tensor, and we have Diffuser models. Absolutely amazing. Now, if you want to figure out where these models are, you want to go to your Invoke AI folder. So you have the models folder here, and in there you have the converted checkpoints folder where you have your converted diffuser models. Now, the interesting thing here, for example, for Chroma V5 is that the original checkpoint is only two gigabytes, but now this is 3.8 gigabytes, so it takes more space. But the reason for that is because this is packing everything into one folder, including the VAE file and everything else that is needed. So when you open up that folder, you can see that a lot of different things are going in here and they need a bit more space on your hard drive. Now let's talk about other things that have changed in the UI. And one of the best things that has changed here is that now we have a window for the prompt and then also we have a window for the negative prompt. Now, don't worry about your old prompts where you have used square brackets to create the negative prompt. This will still work. So when you load the information from your old renders, this is still working fine with nothing in the negative prompt area here. Now, another thing that's very positive here is that the upscaling as well as the face restoration will keep the files in your gallery here on the right side so you can keep working on them after applying these steps. Now, I also told you that you can now merge models and you can do textual inversion training. And when you start Invoke AI in the command, when you see these choices here under number three and four, but I want to point out that these are early developments and they work in the command window only. So for example, if you load into the textual inversion training, you can see here that this is in the command window. It doesn't have a UI. Now they try to create a little bit of a UI and you can control this with your arrow keys and with your space bar to make these choices to go through this. So it's not super complicated, but it's still very early stage. Another thing you can see here is that for the training of textual inversion, you actually only can use the diffuser models. So I wouldn't suggest for you to do textual inversion right now with Invoke AI, but if you know what you're doing, you can test it out. The same is true for the model merging. Now here again, this is in the command window. This is going to be added rather soon into the UI. And again, here you have only the choice between the diffuser models to merge them together. The process here is fairly simple. So you simply select the base model, which is model one with the arrow keys and your space bar, and then go to the second one. Let's say model two is Chroma V5 and then model three, we say none. You can go down here and you say wait some or other methods you want to use. And down here, you can then select the weight that you have from the second model. So for example, 0.5s give you kind of a 50-50 mix. And if you want to have just a hint of the second model in the first model, you go with the lower value, for example, 0.25. So with that, you can experiment with merging these models together and see what kind of styles and what kind of amazing things you can get. And playing around with merging models actually very, very useful. By the way, there's also a new thing that I'm doing over in my Facebook community, which you should absolutely join. I am doing the AI feature Monday. So if you want to be featured on my official Instagram account, you can post images in there as a comment together with your Instagram name so I can feature you as a post. 
So for example, you can see here an image by Architechnique that I have posted on my Instagram together with some hashtags and a little bit of a description of the image. Let me know in the comments what you think about the changes. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.